Minoxidil is one of the most effective and widely used treatments for hair loss, but a lot of people don't realize there are ways to actually make it work better. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, evidence-based hacks to maximize your minoxidil results and boost your hair growth. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified dermatologist, and this channel is all about skin, hair, and nail health backed by science. So if you want clear, actionable tips that you can actually apply to your life, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you hit that like button so other people can find this information too. Before we dive into these hair growth hacks, I do just want to mention not all hair loss is the same, and so not all hair loss is going to respond to the same interventions. Now, the vast majority of people struggling with hair loss will have something called female or male pattern hair loss, also known as androgenetic alopecia. And for most people, this is going to look like a slow thinning of hair over time. People might not even notice increased shedding, but just notice that they're seeing more of their middle part, or for men, noticing a little bit of balding in the back or at the temples. But if your hair loss is different than that, or maybe you're just not sure, it never hurts to get evaluated by a physician who specializes in hair loss to just ensure that you're on the right path. And quick refresher, minoxidil is the only FDA approved topical treatment for androgenetic alopecia or male or female pattern hair loss. And something that's so great about it is it's available over the counter. You'll find it at most drugstores. It's usually labeled as Rogaine or Hims or just generic minoxidil. And you'll see that it comes in two forms, either a foam or a liquid that you can apply to your scalp. And today is all about tips to help you get better results from your minoxidil. If you want a deep dive on minoxidil itself, oral versus topical, side effects, how it works. I have separate videos on that and I totally encourage you to check those out after you watch this one. So without further ado, let's get into these hacks. Within dermatology, I specialize in hair loss. There is not a day that goes by in my clinic that I am not discussing minoxidil with my patients and these are the same hacks that I share with them. Number one, you wanna make sure that you are using 5% minoxidil. If you're just like walking down the drugstore aisles, you will see that 5% minoxidil and 2% minoxidil exist. And classically, the 5% has been approved for men and the 2% has been approved for women. But the reality is 5% works better in both men and women and 5% minoxidil is safe for both men and women. The reason the 2% exists and is approved for women is when you bump up the strength of minoxidil to 5%, although you get much better hair growth on your head, there does come with that small risk of a side effect of getting a little bit of facial hair growth, but the reality is it's usually not much facial hair growth that can also happen with the 2%, so you might as well just get the better results. Also, the 5% is usually cheaper than the 2%, so if you're a female and you're buying the 2%, you're really just like paying the pink tax with no additional benefit. So I just wanna reiterate, because sometimes on the minoxidil packaging for 5%, it will say not for women, it's okay for women. So now that you've got the right strength, the next step is applying the minoxidil where it actually needs to go. If you're struggling with messy or imprecise application, there are special applicators that you can actually get like off of Amazon, for example, and they're used for all sorts of things, scalp serums, hair oils, etc. but some people use this for minoxidil and you can actually just take a little bit of your minoxidil solution, put it into the chamber and then run it through your scalp and you get a really even distribution and it's down on your scalp and less on your hair. And I'll link the one that I recommend to my patients in the description. Now, something I found as a dermatologist is sometimes it's not the application itself that deters people from using minoxidil or using it correctly, but it's the fact that they get irritation from the product. And there are a couple different things you can do to address this. One, it's important to know that the liquid tends to be more irritating than the foam. One of the reasons for that is the liquid has propylene glycol and a lot of people actually have an allergy to this ingredient. So if you're having a lot of itchiness and flaking from your minoxidil, transitioning from liquid to foam is an easy first step. And if irritation is still an issue, your dermatologist can actually prescribe a topical anti-inflammatory solution that you can apply to your scalp a few times a week that really helps calm things down. And it's also important to note that some people's scalp adapts to the minoxidil. So when I first started using it, probably for the first few months, I did have what looked like more dandruff, more flaking, and I was going, ooh, I, I really like where I'm going with this, but I don't love this side effect, but as I continued to use the minoxidil, my scalp seemed to be able to receive it and work with it better, and all of that went away on its own. The reason I think it's so important to find a minoxidil version that you can tolerate is because it's very hard to be consistent if you're dreading putting it on because of what it's going to make your scalp feel like or look like. So strategizing with your dermatologist, using these tips should help you get better results because it's gonna allow you to be more consistent. So let's say you've got your 5% minoxidil, you've got your distribution game on point, you can tolerate it. 
How do we make it work better? The first thing you can do is combine it with topical derma rolling or microneedling. Microneedling or derma rolling is one of the best ways to supercharge the efficacy of your minoxidil. You're essentially creating these micro injuries in the scalp, which release growth factors, which help with blood flow and help the absorption of your minoxidil. But you need to be really careful with microneedling because you are creating injuries in the skin. You need to make sure that you are cleansing your scalp really well. You are disinfecting your microneedling tool. So really like know thyself. This hack is not going to be for everyone. So if you are going to do this at home, you have to start with a clean scalp. So I recommend doing this after the shower. And then you usually want to use something between 0.5 millimeters and one millimeter. I don't have my patients go deeper than that at home. And you're going to take your clean device. I'll link the ones that I recommend in the description box. And you're going to go forward and backward like this. And then you're gently going to roll in the opposite or perpendicular direction. You don't need to be really traumatic with this. You want to be really gentle. And I mentioned the gentleness, not just because you're creating small injuries to your scalp, but also you don't want to break your hair. If you are pushing really hard with your derma roller, you can actually like break the hair and that messes with your whole progress. And then generally right after that, you're going to apply your minoxidil. Now you don't necessarily have to do this over your entire scalp. I have patients who have a lot of thinness right down their center part and just at the temples and that's where they focus their microneedling and that's okay too. Now there are other ways to boost your minoxidil efficacy without microneedling your scalp. So if that hack is not for you, let's talk about the next thing. And that is to add tretinoin to your scalp care routine. Tretinoin is traditionally used for the treatment of acne. A lot of people use it for wrinkles and its anti-aging benefits, but there's data to show that tretinoin helps convert minoxidil into its active form and can help with the absorption of minoxidil in the scalp. So minoxidil straight up is not effective. It actually has to be converted to its active form in your scalp. And some people just don't have as much of the enzyme to create that conversion. So tretinoin can help with that. And if you're not like an optimal responder to minoxidil, it can turn you into one. And you can basically use any strength of tretinoin to do this. So if someone is already using topical tretinoin for anti-aging benefits, I just have them take that and apply it into their hairline and sometimes down their middle part for that extra little something. For example, at night when I'm doing my skincare routine, when I get to my tretinoin step for my face, I will just take a little extra, maybe half a pea-sized amount and just dab it on my fingers and then just sort of massage it through my frontal hairline and I do put it down my middle part because those are the areas that have the most sparseness. Now just don't overdo it because tretinoin in and of itself can be irritating and you don't wanna cause new irritation because that can backfire on you. Now, if you feel like you need a more thorough application of tretinoin, there are prescription compounds that combine minoxidil and tretinoin together, but like I said, it's a prescription, so you have to talk to your doctor about it. So let's say you're doing your microneedling, you're adding in tretinoin, or you've heard both of those tips and you're thinking, eh, I don't, those ones aren't for me. The other thing you can do to enhance the efficacy of your minoxidil is to incorporate red light therapy. This is also known as LLLT, low level light therapy or low level laser therapy. And perhaps you've seen these like red light helmets or red light caps. That's what I'm talking about. For a long time, we've known that red light therapy helps with hair growth, but there was actually just a very recent meta-analysis published in August of this year that shows that combining minoxidil with LLLT enhances your results in terms of hair density and hair thickness. I often get a lot of questions like, are those hair combs or red light caps gimmicks? No, there is good evidence for them with and without minoxidil. Now, of course, not every red light device is created equal. The ones I typically recommend to my patients are either iRestore or Current Body. There are other great brands out there too. You just wanna make sure that it's FDA cleared. And I usually tell my patients to look for something like a money back guarantee because not everyone is going to respond to these. So you wanna make sure that it's actually an appropriate investment for you and you're not gonna lose money on something like that. And then when it comes to how often you should use your red light therapy, you just have to go by the specific device's recommendations because those recommendations are based on the specs of that device. Sometimes it's 10 minutes a day, sometimes it's 25 minutes every other day. So just go by what your specific device recommends. Now, minoxidil use doesn't have to stop at the scalp. Often when people have hair thinning on their scalp, they may also notice thinning in their eyebrows or their beard or mustache area. And minoxidil can be used in those areas too to give you thicker hair. For example, I use it on my scalp and I use it on my eyebrows. The main difference is I apply my minoxidil for my scalp at night and I apply my minoxidil for my eyebrows during the day. And the reason for that is, if I put minoxidil on my face and then I go sleep at night, I'm worried that I'm gonna like rub my minoxidil around and I'm gonna end up way fuzzier than I really need to be there. So 
when I'm doing my makeup in the morning, I will apply minoxidil to my brows either with a spoolie or sometimes a Q-tip if I have it on hand, and then I'll just go in and apply my brow gel. And when it comes to the beard and mustache area, you can just apply that in the evening when you're applying minoxidil elsewhere. Sometimes guys will get little bald patches in their beards. That's actually a different type of hair loss called alopecia areata, or more specifically alopecia barbe when it's in the beard area. And minoxidil has actually been shown to be helpful for that as well. Now, no matter where you're putting your minoxidil topically, there is one safety point that I wanna talk about because I don't feel like it is always addressed. And that is minoxidil is very toxic to cats and dogs. So if you are using topical minoxidil at home, you need to be very responsible with how you're using it. Whenever I talk about topical minoxidil use on Instagram or on TikTok, I get a lot of comments like, well, I'm not gonna use it because I have dogs or I have a cat. And I actually treat a surprising number of veterinarians who have small animals at home who are okay with using their topical minoxidil. So I'm gonna tell you what they recommend. So first of all, after you apply it, you're going to wash your hands, right? Like you don't wanna to be touching your animals if you have minoxidil still on your hands. You're gonna let it fully dry. And then if you have a cat or another type of animal that likes to sleep in your bed or near your pillow, what they recommend is using some type of bonnet, like a silk bonnet, for example, to just tie off over your scalp so that your hair is not exposed at all. Now, if your animal doesn't sleep in your bed, that's less important, but minoxidil can transfer onto your pillowcase and that can expose your animal as well. So they've recommended putting a towel over your pillow when you leave or get up for the day. And then of course, you always wanna keep your minoxidil out of reach from your pets. Now, if your cat like sleeps on your head, yeah, maybe topical minoxidil is not for you. And of course, everyone's pet situation is going to be a little bit different. So you kind of have to know yourself. Again, this is really important when it comes to any topical and just understand if this makes sense for your lifestyle. But I did wanna give those options because I do have so many patients who are nervous about topical minoxidil with their pets and there are ways to do it safely. Now, perhaps the most important thing I'm going to talk about today when it comes to getting the best minoxidil results is making a plan for you to be consistent with your application. In the clinical studies, people are using minoxidil every single day. And I know that's not feasible for everyone, but what I recommend is when you first start, try and use it every single day. That's how you're going to get a sense of whether or not it works for you within three to five months, you should see little baby hairs starting to sprout up. And then once you're kind of at the density that you want, you can start tapering it back a little bit. Maybe you use it four times a week or you don't use it right on the days that you wash your hair because you don't want to mess up your hairstyle when it's fresh. And that's okay. Some degree of consistency though is needed. I'm at the point now where I probably use my minoxidil realistically four to five nights a week and it's worked great for me. Now, once you've achieved these results, in order to maintain your results, you do need to continue to use minoxidil indefinitely. And the reason for that is female and male pattern hair loss are slowly progressive hair conditions. They don't just like disappear because you get older. And so you always need to be reminding your scalp to make new hair and keep nudging it towards that. I sort of think of it like how you would work out and build up muscle. Once you've built up that muscle in the gym, if you don't continue to exercise, you're going to lose that progress. And the same goes for minoxidil. So one conversation I always have with my patients is, okay, if you're going to start this, the plan is to be on it forever. If you use these hacks, it's going to be effective for you and it's not going to take up a large part of your day. Like my minoxidil application takes literally under two minutes, but it's just something that you have to decide that you want to commit to. And finally, what do you do if topical minoxidil just isn't going to work for you? Whether it's irritation, you don't like having to apply it every day, maybe you do have a pet that sleeps on your head, you do have an option for oral minoxidil. Now, unlike topical minoxidil, oral minoxidil actually isn't FDA approved for hair loss, but as dermatologists, we use it all the time, very effectively. I have hundreds of patients who take oral minoxidil successfully, so it's totally worth talking to your doctor about if topical isn't right for you. And like I mentioned in the beginning, I have a whole video on oral minoxidil. So if you have questions about that, definitely check it out. So there you have it, my minoxidil hacks to help you get better results. If you have any questions about minoxidil, definitely feel free to ask them in the comments. Also, if you use any of these minoxidil hacks or have found success with other hacks, please let us know. We always wanna be getting better, fuller hair growth. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next time.